ओके सो टुडे इज अ वेरी स्पेशल डे फॉर मी ऑन द चैनल ऑन टेलीफोन ऑन ईमेल्स ऑन व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप ऑन टेलीग्राम आई रिसीव लॉट्स एंड लॉट्स ऑफ क्यूरीज रिगार्डिंग क्रिटिकल केयर मेडिसिन व्हाट आर द कोर्सेज अवेलेबल अक्रॉस द नेशन व्हाट आर द अपॉर्चुनिटीज अवेलेबल अक्रॉस द कंट्री और अब्रॉड एंड you name them and they ask n number of questions regarding intensive care so i could not found better people to answer these queries in an authoritative manner than dr pk jain and dr meeta mehta so yeah. it's my privilege to have you here sir thank you thank uh, you uncle and, and i'm really thankful that you spare time in spite of your so busy schedule today and you agreed to answer the and help out the our members of the channel and all other students who are listening this so just a, a brief intro before we start uh, dr pk jain sir uh, is my mentor and also uh, founder president of uh, college, uh, critical care education foundation and dr meeta mehta madam is president of college of critical care medicine okay so i have noted down certain points sir but before starting these questions of our members one question is very close to my heart and which i wanted to ask you long back basically you started you started iscm indian society of critical care medicine and you started uh, so many of you don't know sir is the founder president of iscm sir uh, but you started in 90s you were in 90s you were very young uh, early stages of your career at this stage so what what made you think at this stage that the country should have a, a branch called critical care medicine and there should be a society and there should be a ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम फॉर इंटेंसिव केयर मेडिसिन इन द कंट्री आई ऑलवेज वॉन्टेड टू आस्क यू दैट टेक्स मे बैक मेनी इयर्स येस वी स्टार्टेड इन नाइनटीन नाइन्टी थ्री यू सी वॉट आई रियलाइज इज दैट एवरी वन इज वेरी बिजी इन लाइफ द पॉपुलेशन एंड दे डोंट वॉन्ट टू गो टू द हॉस्पिटल बिकॉज इट डिस्टर्ब देर लाइफ वेन डू दे गो टू द हॉस्पिटल इज वेन देर सीरियस सो आई देर देर सीरियस इनफ टू रिक्वायर एन इंटेंसिव केयर और they require an intensive care post op because it's a complicated surgery or they may be in the ward but they want a good intensive care in case they deteriorate so um, critical care at that time people didn't know the word intensivist they didn't know what it was about and i know my mentor told me that if you go into critical care you may not be able to feed your family it wasn't an established um, specialty so uh, but what hit me was that my residents came and asked me uh, sir how can we learn critical care where can we go and i remembered that i asked my teachers the same question and i'm sure those teachers asked their they were asked by their students so it had to stop and i had to start and i didn't know how to start it so with a small group of people we founded the indian society of critical care medicine to the members who are listening Sir founded Intense, uh, Indian Society of Critical Medicine somewhere in 1993. 93. Yes. Sir also founded started uh, Indian Journal of Critical Care. Yes. This was also started by you. And then you started Critical Care Education Foundation and yes. this F Triple C M course. So, uh, in fact, I D C C M course was designed by Sir. Huh. Yes. Oh, oh, many of you don't know I D C C M uh, by I S C C M was designed because Sir was the founder president and Sir designed the course I D C C M. So again, come back coming back to that question. You had already established a society. You had already uh, running a course which was well designed at that time. But what made you think that you need to found Critical Care Education Foundation and need to bring F T P L C M course which is running now almost completing almost twenty years in the country? So what made you? Uh, Thought that's a uh, that's a very good question, and I'm sure it's in the minds of a lot of people uh, there. Being the trustee of ICCM even till today, uh, uh, why did we start another course? You see, I spoke to some of the best intensivists around the world who are father of critical care in America and in Europe, etc. And we would meet, and th- they said the same thing. India is a very big country. and where as iccm was doing a great job by doing conferences and exposing people to the latest developments mm-hmm. india needed someone to concentrate not on conferences and the latest technology but in good basic intensive care and formal teaching and training program uh, there and it was too much for one organization to manage mm-hmm. therefore they advised to start a critical care education foundation which really didn't concentrate on conferences 
it was about developing world class courses conducting the exams training them in not only in big cities but in towns and um, 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 towards rural india where you could train people in what is required not expensive critical care but good compassionate critical care so that is why we formed another organization it is impossible for one society to manage in for that matter it's difficult for two societies india is a huge country do you know how many icus india has <laughs> No, Whereas most countries have two hundred, three hundred, five hundred intensive care units, India has close to about seventy thousand, and that's our estimate. And if you take that, there are going to be six bedded, eight bedded. Will you know that there are some ICUs in hospitals which are two hundred bedded, one hundred twenty bedded? Even if you take them all to be six or eight bedded, which can be managed by four people, that means you for each hospital or each ICU you need four people uh, trained. multiply that by say 70 75000 you need a huge number so the real problem is that with such large number of intensive care units the residents there would benefit from a structured training program which is really prepares them to handle any emergency that they can I means they are working in the icus they want to dedicate themselves to the intensive care they are learning from their seniors and whatever they discuss among themselves but there isn't a formal structure training exactly. program for them okay. so um, that's 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 um, nobody would thought of this that it already established society was running already they were doing so many conferences and all and then thinking sir i remember that uh, the australian examiners used to come in ccf this fcpc m exam in the early days and they were a part of it and so why don't you tell them sir how did you start this why did you think of getting this kind of a formal yes, training yes I, i i wanted the doctors training here now we you may say that i already started the idccm hmm. then why did we start another course hmm. well idccm was started by me when i was about 33 years old with no experience of how to start a course we did cut and paste from the internet if you be, want me to be honest but having gained more experience of international critical care hmm. i was very impressed with the australian standards of critical care amazing i used to think that under iccm we were doing a great job but when i went to australia and observed the examination system i felt we were in the dark ages of critical care and that critical care internationally was so different that indian students weren't prepared for it so i requested the teachers and those dedicated to critical care education in australia to help me set up something like that in india and uh, they obliged and for in fact for 7 8 years they helped us conduct the exams here on the same level as an international exam would be so that's about uh, how we started the uh, and then uh, they saw that it is uh, at par with the pattern which they were following in the australia so they stop coming and then um, ours was a independent course in fact later. they we uh, got the system from there hmm. but over the period of years hmm. we evolved the system so well hmm. that they also picked a few things which we introduced in our course and they were impressed to introduce that in their course like the so logbook system yeah like the logbook system from so logbook. that was a very proud moment <laughs> <laughs> so from logbook i uh, i uh, remember that madam you passed this exam on t- in 2004 yeah i was the first batch of this uh, and there was no logbook issue no, lo- no logbook at the time the moment you passed you introduced the logbook in the ac- uh, yes. academics of the sir uh, um, cheeky person <laughs> <laughs> so no so i was when i gave this exam hmm. dr ankur hmm. uh you, you were, were already already running a, a, a intensive care you were the head of the intensive yes, care department i was a very proud intensivist of, of a prominent hospital in mumbai and in fact i was teaching uh, even the other doctors used to run seven days course in our hospital it was a cardiac institute so in fact i used to teach them in how to put iibp how to do hemodynamic hemodynamic monitoring those days 20 years back hmm. uh but when we this course was started by sir hmm. in that hospital and i also used to sit i didn't enroll for the course in the beginning but the way he started teaching uh, i thought maybe i don't know anything about the critical care so that time it hit me that critical care is not about putting lines tubes drains ibps no it is about thinking how you're thinking and how uh, on basis you take decisions and uh, take out the patient from a very bad situation and then i requested ki 
can I also give this exam? And it was a tough decision because I was already 10, 12 years postgraduate and uh, head of an ICU. But I'm very happy that I gave this exam and it changed my life from uh, being a student uh, at that time to today president of the College of Critical Economics. So this, this, uh, um, this forces me to ask you your journey. As a student, you passed the exam in 2004, then you became a teacher, then you became a senior examiner and then finally the president of the college. And you made a lot of changes in this FCCM exam uh, as a team. So, how is your journey? You have you are seeing you have seen the evolution of FCCM from 2004 to now, almost 20 years now. How this course has evolved? What has kept this course still very relevant to the newest technologies and other? Some uh, how, tell me something about your yeah, journey. So, uh, when I enrolled in the course, actually uh, none of the other teachers except for Dr. Jain knew how the exam is going to be conducted and just one month before the exam we had two uh, very brilliant doctors from Australia who had also given this exam and I, I, I won't mind talking telling you about their names Dr. Nikki and Dr. Carol they also have the book Nikki Blackwell and Carol Foote Carol Foot, yes. so they, they have their book uh, of intensive they care they have a beautiful exactly. book on beautiful intensive care, care book. and we I was very lucky at that time they were visiting India and they introduced one month before, uh, uh, because they also gave the same exam, the pattern they introduced to us. And um, initial first batch, we were only 10 students. Today we have gone up to approximately 40 to 50 students and it has become a bigger and bigger batch. And the journey has been incredible. Uh, I saw myself totally changed personality. L the perspective towards treating the patient has totally changed because now you think it's not about on the ABG you see low bicarb and you give bicarb as a knee jerk response. There is a justification for everything. And over the period of time, it makes you a very confident person because knowledge is power. And it is all logic. Lot of emphasis in this exam on clinical examination, which the touch has gone. People are just hampering on investigations. And right from the student then to becoming a uh, faculty, to becoming a teacher to becoming a president it is blissful you meet uh, examiners uh, during this time maybe once or twice in a year we exchange ideas and what i like about liked all over the those years about this foundation that it welcomes the ideas which are good mm -hmm. so anyone who has good idea or suggestions is welcomed and immediately introduced into the system that's how the system has evolved Dr. Jain is a founder, president and the pillar of this course, but he is open to the ideas. So people who have been there right from the beginning, every time we meet and there are some suggestions, they are immediately implicated because there is uh, there's nothing like we have to pass this through some council. Of course, we have an academic council, but we sit as an academic council and it is passed at that time. That's how it keeps on changing all the time and it has changed the lives of so many people. I have changed myself. Uh, so much I have seen the changes. Other than that, that I have seen many people change their life, including you. I have seen you Ankur, growing from, I mean, when you gave exam that time and now you are totally different. Like that so many people, they, it has changed their life. May it's I add one thing? That this course we called as the Sherlock Holmes approach, mm -hmm. basically because this great detective, mm -hmm. Sherlock Holmes, relied on very fundamental things. The power of observation, and the power of deduction and i think that's what intensivists have to be they if you have a patient who comes in crashing uh, in front of you you don't have the time to get investigations done but you need to your eyes need to look at clues okay and you need to pick up the a few clues or abnormalities that are there and deduct in your mind what could be the possibilities that are there and what would be top of the line etc and do a targeted investigation, which not only saves time, saves a lot of money to the patient. It cannot be, okay, do a CT scan from head to toe, do this, do that, do all the blood panels, etc. It's pretty expensive for Indians to when they're shelling out money from their own pocket. And there is a lot of waste of time in investigations. Our intensivists, I'm very proud to say, are like commandos of medicine. Yes. They are not like Havaldas and inspectors, they are commandos, they are black cats and therefore they are very well prepared not with 
established protocols, but they're, they're trained to change their approach as new evidence comes forward. Decision making has improved so much. It's decision making and they, they can do a very good job. Nehru. So what I, I have seen uh, uh, regarding this course is, uh, this fellowship is, equal emphasis is given to the bedside medicine which is i think uh, it's it's a dying art in uh, for many clinicians because a uh, lot of them depends upon the technology part but this uh, fellowship makes you learn bedside medicine in detail implement this with the latest technologies available and in synchrony whatever best for the patient they can give and it boosts uh, the uh, confidence of the intensivist and in it boosts their morale and lot of um, 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 what i would say uh, they feel so nice that they can save the life of so many patients but sir so by the time those who are listening they must be curious about this course fellowship course after pulse cm so few few moments or few minutes for dedicated to this regarding this course so that those who are listening can get an idea how they how this course is about how they can enroll so first thing first what is the eligibility uh, who all can give this exam the eligibility criteria okay allopathic doctors hmm. who have some experience of ICU hmm. and want to make it their career they are eligible now while many consider intensive care or critical care to be a speciality and therefore suggest or recommend that only postgraduates post MDs hmm. can enter this field the reality is that with the requirement of intensivists going into lakhs at any time and if we don't have uh, enough qualified then uh, the we will not make a dent to the quality of critical care it made sense to have mbbs doctors uh, also take this course obviously uh, for an mbbs person it's a longer course mm -hmm. it's a two year course whereas for a post md general medicine or chest medicine or anesthesia it can be reduced to a one year course. So that's the eligibility uh, uh, for this. I just want to add one thing that uh, see MD uh, medicine or anesthesia is three years course. For three years they are also MBBS. The day they give exam and they pass they become MD and, uh, in whatever subjects they have. People who are MBBS and do this course actually need to know at least six months to one year to be working in the ICU before they enroll in the course because this is a serious critical care course and then they give two years another uh, time so by the time they clear their fellowship they are also three years mm. and at the end of three years when they become fellows it is a super speciality what we have seen over the period of years so many years is people who are MD and uh, in anesthesia or medicine or any other post graduation they give this exam just for that extra tag of fellowship in because this is a prestigious exam that extra tag of F triple CM but people who are MBBS the doctors who are enrolling and post MBBS they are more serious towards this course mm. because for them this is their career mm. and they are so enthusiastic and they come out with flying colors and that's how they are very powerful and knowledgeable so because that is their career and after that also because by the uh, uh, at the end of fellowship of three years, almost three years for a post MBBS, they are so well trained uh, and their knowledge is so wide because they we train them in all the aspects. Many of them, I think 40 to 50 percent of them, have gone ahead and given a post graduation exams after doing their fellowship, and they have been successful. So it becomes easy for them. It becomes extremely easy for them, and they don't waste time giving need for years and years together before deciding that okay now I am not getting anything so I will do critical so, yeah, so after that's I'm a maybe... very good point may I add one thing I also believe that with the number of students applying for post graduation mm. and the percentage getting in mm. is very small mm. I believe that those who don't get into post graduations are in no way inferior to those who get post graduation it's that just there are not enough seats a large number of candidates who are very good for some reason whatever it is fail to get into post graduation but they're in no way inferior to the candidates who are successful 
they need an opportunity because they know they're good they feel life hasn't been fair to them and they get into depression this is an opportunity for mbbs students to give a fellowship exam in critical care and be on par with other consultants so what i um, can make out from this is if you are you have done mbbs and you have tried for need one or two years and if you somehow didn't get an opportunity to clear the exam you can enroll in this course if you have some icu experience by the time yeah you, you need to have icu experience one that year, is important one year, one year post mbbs one year icu experience you can enroll in this course get a training you will i am sure that you will get a lot of um, uh, info about the medicine part and then you can again try for the uh, post graduation exam if, but you will not waste those for 5 years 3 4 years and getting into depression and sort of thing because it's something the course is giving you respect opportunity uh, uh, and we uh, opening doors ahead the trend is now whenever we select the people to work in our icu is if there is an md person who is freshly passed and if there is a person who is trained mm. in uh, critical care by this course we will definitely pre- prefer, prefer the person prefer. who has done f triple c m over md person because we all know when we pass out just md uh, exam the next day we are just i mean we still need lot of experience to work in the icu that's why they do sr ship exactly. <laughs> exactly at the cost of taking your time uh, in this program uh, i know many candidates who come and tell me that before they got into this fellowship they were feeling very depressed mm. they felt they were useless mm. and they were being treated by other um, post graduate students etc as non entities they were nobody they, the, the word used was i felt like a nobody but after the orientation program when i understood what is there and after the training i felt i am somebody why do you feel like you're somebody is because now the post graduates come and ask me to teach them arterial blood gas interpretation <laughs> they come and ask me to teach them uh, approach to ecgs they come and ask me how to uh, read uh, or interpret uh, biochemical laboratory data etc so i feel i am somebody i think that change mm. even in one person's life is worth all the courses yes. and we have this for many of our students okay so uh, so now you have got an idea about the eligibility mbbs uh, plus uh, one year of experience to get enrolled in the course two years in the course duration post graduate for post graduate students who have done md chest medicine the list is there on the, uh, yeah, it's there on, on, the, on the website then they can apply for the exemption so that it reduce get reduced to one year but you have to fill an exemption exemption form which is there on the website now as i am representing at present now the students which are viewing this channel so the next question they ask is many of them are working in the periphery many of them working in uh, already working at some job they have financial implications they have responsibilities by that time now so they want to leave their job and get enrolled into a recognized institute for this fellowship or they can give from where they are that's that's my next question they want to hear that yeah i think that there are two opportunities one is if they work in a recognized icu they have a guide a recognized icu by ccf by training, ccf sorry training. recognized so icu so we have a lot of hospitals which have been doing this training for years uh, and there has been a formal inspection done by the college and the foundation for the same course and uh, so they run a formal training so their teachers are well versed with the system and they have already have a students who have done this fellowship so people who enroll new they have guides to guide them yes. to the course these are very often past students mm. and so they are familiar with the system they know what they have to teach so students from there have some advantage but it is not possible because there are there are cities where there is no center and, and what do they do for a long time they couldn't appear so now you don't have to be in a recognized institute you can work in the icu where you are but you need to work in an icu uh, it's a critical care course so if you're working there and you have some head of department or senior intensivist to guide you that is fine you can apply as a candidate from a non recognized institute independent independent uh, candidate and why does this work is because the college actually takes periodical online training programs so it teaches you no, uh, and interacts physical program also that which is very important 
ऑनलाइन प्रोग्राम आर अफकोर्स देयर टाइम टू टाइम बट वी हैव एटलीस्ट टू फिजिकल कॉन्टैक्ट पर ईयर वेर वी मीट ईच एंड एवरी कैंडिडेट द वन इन द बिगनिंग इज अ ओरिएंटेशन प्रोग्राम वेर आफ्टर एनरोलिंग ऑल द कैंडिडेट्स मीट द फैकल्टी एंड वी गिव दैम अ प्रॉपर ट्रेनिंग इन टू बेसिक सब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ क्रिटिकल केयर एंड गिव दैम आइडिया अबाउट हाउ टू प्रिपेयर दैम सेल्फ फॉर दिस कोर्स and that we call it is an orientation program which is around 4 days uh, it's an, uh, to tell everyone it's not a basic course but it's a basic, basic to advanced it's applied yeah. yes a- and it's an eye opener because it's not it takes into a lot of details which most of the courses don't exactly. it goes into tremendous depth yeah means right from uh, learning abg ct scan ecgs up to transplant critical care ecmos and hemodynamic monitoring Uh, so uh, most of the aspects of critical care are covered so first physical contact is orientation and then just before their exam we give them a crash course training where it's a crash training from exam point of view and we prepare them uh, so that that fear of going for the exam for the first time and because the exam system is absolutely different this exam system is worth watching we have had people who are obs- who come as an observer to uh, observe the exam and they feel how is it possible to conduct this kind of an exam and there is a mock exam and mock. of course so uh, along with the crash course there is a mock exam and immediately after that they they have their theory exam so at least two time minimum physical contacts and then con- uh, over the period of time in between they have uh, online teaching also continuously over there and there are lots of practice exercises yes. the uh, uh, scenarios so hand holding has been done hand holding uh, yes okay so to sum up uh, from where you can enroll in this course so if you get a chance to enroll in a ccf recognized institute uh, icu well enough but you if we don't uh, your um, circumstances don't permit you can apply from the, the icu from where you are working you need to work in icu to the college and the college can uh, give you a green uh, clearance that okay uh, by so and so terms condition whatever the college decide and you can go and not only that the college trains you in two years by one is orientation program rightly said which is just after enrolling there is a physical meet and before the exam you have a crash course in which from exam point of view and in between we try to cover up by online teachings and, yeah, and along with that on our website we have a self assessment training program which, which website ma'am uh, it's www.icueducation.com and also there is uh, another website where you can get information about the exam mm-hmm. is www.collegeofcriticalcare.com so all the information is available about the eligibility about the pattern of exam there are last dates for last the exam. dates of the exams so and please. everything is there available on the websites and uh, on icueducation.com there are self assessments mm. where they can learn continuously throughout the year mm. and then there are some certificate courses also which is again training followed by the certificate on uh, important aspects of the critical care okay so uh, you, you can go visit icueducation.com and college of critical care so one more question which my uh, channel members have asked that so this society is basically based in india so can people uh, those who are not in india from abroad also can enroll for this course well already in 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 the past few years we've had intensives from nepal bangladesh uh, middle east uh, west indies etc uh, uh, requesting us to apply i think there was an application in between from turkey uh, there as people are getting aware of this course they want to appear and uh, they are eligible to do that but they will be treated as an overseas candidate candidate okay. for the so exam. the fee structure will be a little different they otherwise train they train in their own institute they attend the online classes and the physical classes they have to come here which is just twice a year okay so um, overseas candidates don't have any restriction they can apply for the course from whichever country you are only thing you need to connect to the college and then the fee structure and something will be different depending upon the country or whatever the requirements are so when when you may feel this why am i asking this but when i started this uh, channel means what i have learned from this fellowship uh, at triple cm that whatever you learn you should teach exactly whatever you learn you should teach um, to fellow colleagues your nursing staff or whoever comes uh, across your journey so that was the motive behind this mm. so 
surprisingly what i've seen is on the channel there are very senior people also get attached to us they are already working their opds they are already working in the practice but they are also asking is there a something structured cool for with the senior people can alive in the 50s 55 60s 45s already established already um, uh, senior consultants so it becomes very uncomfortable for them to leave their job and enroll in a course they are already teachers of some courses under them True. so is there any uh, provision for them uh, which can help them out well uh, two things one over the years Uh, we've had many professors and head of departments and intensivists head of departments also give this course uh, we've had very senior people who uh, plus. could be proudly say that all the, the consultants in the city or town have been their students and they have gone through a formal attending of orientation crash course giving the exam theory practical etc they've done that and in the past there was really no pathway but recently the academic council recommended the starting of honorary fellowship in critical care medicine uh, there so they are the um, senior candidates and i will define what senior is can get an honorary f triple cm uh, certification these are people who are post graduates that is post md with 10 years of icu experience or mbbs with 15 years of icu experience they can apply for being considered for the honorary f triple c m after they apply there's a token money that they have to pay mm. uh, and once th- that process is there and they fill in mm. uh, a form the academic council sets up within 1 to 2 weeks in a very short period an academic evaluation team which does a physical or zoom meeting with them very often it's a zoom meeting I won't call it. It's more of an interview. It's more to know what that person Percentage. knows because you can work for fifteen years or fifty years in an ICU and not know anything. But they they just want to be sure that the quality of the certification isn't lowered. They evaluate and then within a week or two, uh, I think even within less than a week, they inform the candidate of uh, passing. Now the candidate, uh, because he's now. F triple C M, and all F triple C M candidates who are uh, are also teachers, and therefore what this person needs to do is he needs to take four lectures in critical care, so we can assess That his knowledge. That is the only criteria. Of which two topics he chooses, two topics the academic council gives it, and he has about two months time to in which to prepare the prepare this thing, that. and he presents these, and that adds to the evaluation of his knowledge. the skill of teaching etc because the moment they become f triple cm they become recognized as teachers and they can take students under them so this is the whole process that is there once they do this then they get again you, again you can go to the college of critical website and get the details but this um, uh, question uh, this um, question means uh, provokes me to ask this question that you said that after f triple cm they become teachers so what are the opportunities once somebody has passed this fellowship because students enrolled and they got clear the exam and now they are f triple cm and a fellow member of the college of critical care medicine so what opportunities are now opened up from them one per se in the college and one beyond the college in the in the career any sir so uh, once the candidates pass out f triple cm first of all we have by that time such strong bonding with them mm. and we call it as a family f triple cm family and there is a very very close bonding and as uh, you already mentioned that they become teachers so uh, either they can become examiners so only for that they have to come twice to observe the exam they have already gone through the formal training of giving exam so they know what is the system they just need to know from this side from the examiner side how it is conducted so if they observe twice the exam they become formal examiners okay. so number one they can contribute by becoming examiners mm-hmm. official examiners and start coming as an examiner uh, number two i think sir you will agree and he will also uh, endorse that many of our candidates after fel- finishing fellowship of course they have been heading icu despite being mbbs uh, they definitely have bright futures but they have gone abroad 
and they are doing so well sir uh, you I, i i remember one of our students um, uh, kiran is uh, finished his mbbs gave this exam went to australia and is now a professor of critical care medicine in brisbane professor of critical care right. in brisbane okay and uh, with tremendous research work being published we have consultants in london and who have done this fellowship and have been very successful as consultants they have been accepted by the peers we've had uh, our students uh, go to uh, so, north america where they have uh, got into the best top 3 icus of the world um, uh, and and have worked there and have not only worked there one of our candidates was invited to teach there uh, there and of course middle gulf east country, yeah. gulf countries uh, bangladesh everywhere they actually start a movement of quality critical care uh, in those places so uh, there is definitely an opportunity and i know some of the top 3 uh, icus in the world the um, because i've been close to them uh, they give preference to triple f triple cm candidates uh, in their selection so so after clearing this f triple cm obviously you will have uh, great um, opportunities in your career but also in the college if you are interested then you can become a teacher you can become an examiner and depending upon your interest yeah and if you're a good speaker like mm-hmm. in fccm it is compulsory for them to present few powerpoint presentations mm-hmm. uh, to the students other students and to the uh, examiners or the faculty and they if they are good students mm-hmm. they become speakers on college uh, council and they can also start teaching the students whenever they uh, get an opportunity yes. to have so, uh, so uh, i think we are running short of time um but uh, before closing uh, sir to all those who are listening mbbs post graduates people senior people those who are working uh, in their fields what one message you as a chairman of ccf and madam you as a uh, president of college of critical would like to give uh, to our members one message from you sir i think it's words. always ladies first <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, so if i have to just tell you in short I think uh, once you finish the F Triple C M, what I feel, and I am really proud because I myself am a F Triple C M. You are an F Triple C M. That we bring out a very confident, very knowledgeable, powerful, and a better human being in this society, who will take care with the their core of the heart, their heart in the right place. Uh, the best of the critical care wherever they are in this country or in this world nice so nice so uh, i think if you love critical care and it's it's uh, a speciality where there's going to be so much demand uh, that i don't think you will have a problem of employment you there is a tremendous amount of demand so it doesn't matter honestly which exam you give as long as you get some exam i'm not talking of the 3 months 6 months but any because you need at least 1 to 2 years of proper training to become a good intensivist and you should all aim to be good intensivist but of all the exams that are there the one and i've been associated with all of them the one i feel is best for your future uh, though you have to work a little harder and you have to show tremendous integrity which we uh, expect from all of our students honesty integrity hard work uh, there but you will be set for life your life will change your peers will respect you your colleagues will look up to you and they will t- take your advice and therefore if you have if i have to do this all over again i would love to do f triple cm exam thank you thank you sir so uh, that's all for today and again very special day and moment for me from 2011 to now in 2023 i got got this opportunity to Uh, convey this message of F Triple C M to the members who are listening. Still, if you have doubt, you can go to icuEducation dot com or collegeofcriticalcare dot com. You can uh, go, go through the info, and uh, if you feel still something is remaining, you can post in the comment section of this uh, video, or you can mail to the college directly. It's available on the uh, website. Thank you all for listening.
and see you soon in the next video. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.